uh, I got a heck of a deal. I got a ticket for no operator's license in April uh, when he when he handed me uh, when he came to the the window. He asked for my driver's license. I gave him an affidavit of a right to travel, and I had my name at the top of it. And he went back. <clears throat> it took like 40 minutes because I had it filed at the county recorder's office with along with a couple other papers and uh, comes back and hands me a ticket for no operator's license, no, uh, or my, I had a, a North Carolina tag on it, but it was expired for two years. Gave me a ticket for that, and he gave me a ticket for uh, no inspection. So I went to court for it, and the district attorney has you, you know, when you're representing yourself, has you come up and check in ahead of before the court starts. So I checked in as the authorized representative. Well, when the judge comes walking in, they call roll call again and call my name out. And when they call my name out, I ask, are you asking for the creditor or the debtor? They would not answer me and went right to the next case. And I left the courtroom. I ended up in jail about two weeks after that. Oh, you had to, you had to give me that part. <laughs> they yeah, came out to my door and, and – uh, didn't show me any warrant, just showed me a picture that was taken off of my expired driver's license and and arrested me at my home. And I, and I take care of my elderly parents. Both of them had heart trouble. As a matter of fact, my father had a heart attack the next day. Good Lord. Oh, my gosh. How would so, you handle that, Mark? I, I have available, like I mentioned before, the motion to dismiss because – if you look at their public relations, which they call law or statutes, constitutions, uh, the jurisdiction of all American courts are limited to one single thing, and it's called a case, and that's whether it's civil or criminal. Uh, it doesn't matter because all the crime is is a civil tort. But a case is not synonymous with complaint. One of the things I tell people, if you learn anything from listening to me, it, it remember this, a complaint is not synonymous with synonymous with a case. The complaint sets forth the case, but not every complaint sets forth the case. In fact, you just sue the, you know, file an action against the Internal Revenue Service and you'll find out really real quick that they don't believe that your complaint sets forth the cause of action. So a case is is a uh, is an injury with damage and redressability, meaning that the court can redress the injury. Uh, the injury is always, of course, the violation of a legal right and then you have the damage. In fact, if you go and you type in damn them at Injuria into Google, you'll get a whole bunch of, uh, 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 of scholarly reports and court decisions talking about injuria at Danum, that you have to have the two of them. So if, if their charge against you or their uh, accusation is that you don't have a driver's license, well, you have to examine the ticket and see if anywhere on the ticket did they accuse you of violating someone's legal rights and causing damage. Uh, and if not, then you have no case. And, that's, and so without a case, the court, which is limited to only cases, does not have subject matter jurisdiction. And it cannot be waived, unlike personam jurisdiction. And subject matter jurisdiction can be waived at any time, even for the first time on appeal. Well, it's not on the ticket. And not only that, I had a, uh, a notice of understanding and intent with a claim of right with a fee schedule that was recorded at the county recorder's office, too. And when he, when that, this cop that gave me the tickets, uh, was the city police chief. And when he, it took him like 45 minutes to do all this. And plus he called backup. Now I have my 78 year old mother in the car with me. And, you know, it's like I was a threat or something. And um, what he did was he called, you know, the affidavit in. It's, you know, it's got the page number and the whole deal. And they apparently found my other motions that are filed with the county recorder too. My fee schedule was $1,000 an hour if I'm handcuffed and taken to jail. He came back and, and kind of dropped that ticket in there, and, and he wrote on the ticket, unable to sign for where my signature was. So he didn't even ask me to sign it. He just dropped it in the car. You don't, they don't usually require you uh, to sign it. And as far as collecting on anything like that, I, you know, I, those are things that I stay away from. You know, I, I like what my buddy Ernie Hancock say says. Uh, there, there are those who, there are two types of people in the world: those who want to be left alone, and those who will not leave them alone. And a lot of stuff that you were talking about, 
I don't think goes towards wanting to be left alone. And at the very least, it's not very effective in court, as you found out. I think it's better to stick to a language that these people understand, and that's why I, I put in the motion to dismiss or the motion to strike or demur, uh, I, I, I put in terms that they can understand. Uh, I've, if you go on my website, markstevens.net, you'll see a, an actual response from several prosecutors where they come out, and one's laughable. It's from New York. Some city attorney in upstate New York uh, came out and stated that there was no plaintiff. And imagine that. There is no plaintiff. <laughs> well, there really isn't because the state is a, fi- is a fiction, so it's a fictitious plaintiff. Right. And, and it says in Black's Law 4th edition that the fictitious plaintiff is a fraud upon the court. Well, and, and what better way to bring that up, though, that instead of you and I saying it, how much better it is, is it, Wes, to have the prosecutor say it for you? To me, it's a lot more effective when the prosecutor says it. We had a judge in Austin, Texas, in front of probably 50 people say the same thing, that there was no plaintiff. Oh, okay. Well, since there's no adversary, and this is supposed to be an adversary proceeding, oh, I'll, I'll take yeah, I like a dismissal and walk out of here right now. The thing is, the point being that it's a lot more effective for them to say it than for you to say it. Mm-hmm. They don't care what you have to say, and I don't mean that in a bad way. No, because they I, don't, know, I know. I understand that. They don't care what I have to say. So, so I, that's why you know, through trial and error and adapting to what they're doing and understanding how they're going to respond, that's why I use the motion that I use, or, and I use the particular language that I use. I'm not saying it's magic, but you have to be speaking their language. You have to, you have to meet them at their map of the world. There has to be some overlap. And when you come out with other things like you had mentioned, it, it just, to them, it, it either inflames them or they just don't care. But here, and this is why, you know, go and look at these responses from these county attorneys or these city attorneys. You see, they're actually reading it instead and trying to, re- and, and I, I honestly think, though, guys, that they're doing their best to respond to it. Yes, it's laughable, uh, it, but they're at least trying. They're not just coming out and always saying, oh, frivolous, frivolous, frivolous. Yeah, you get that with the IRS attorneys, but not so much with the uh, local city attorneys. Uh, my only thing is I just need a little bit of help on how to do the demur and the motion to dismiss. Well, I have a template available that you can get on my website, and there's a standing cross-reference that's on my website, so you can take the North – I think it was North Carolina – yeah, the North Carolina uh, equivalent, and then you could just plug those in. And then I give instructions on how to uh, file it. You always – want to file an original and a copy with the court, give a copy to the prosecutor, and I always send a copy to the cop. Yes, I'm giving up my uh, element of surprise, but you know what? I, I don't, one, I don't need it. I, it doesn't matter because there's no case file. That, that nothing's going to change that. Uh, two, uh, I, want to impre- in, I want to increase the chances that the cop's not going to show up. And, I, and like I said, we've got a 75% track record. I had two people in one week where the cop didn't show up, and the tickets got thrown out. So I like that. Yeah, me too. I had also filed a uh, uh, conditional acceptance on the ticket and filed that at the county recorders and and, uh, clocked it into the case at the clerk's office. And they just totally didn't even pay attention to that. And also uh, I did a... uh, Affidavit of specific negative environment, sent it to the uh, district attorney, return receipt requested, and they ignored that. I gave them 10 days to answer it, didn't even pay any attention to it. I mean, then they act like they didn't. Right? What was that, don't, Angela? Don't, don't you notice them for a uh, default? At that I point? didn't do the default. I didn't notice the de- for, for the default. You would get your default, and then you go to a court, and you get a judge to sign it, right? But who's ever gotten a judge to sign that? Right. You can't get the judge. I've tried to get a judge to sign off on uh, reservation of your rights. They they look at it like I, I, my father's got the uh, guy that he graduated from high school with. It's retired Superior Court judge in Maryland. I sent it to him, this uh, affidavit, and, and, he, and he wrote me back a long letter. Said, I've never seen anything like that before. How would you handle something like this, Mark? I wouldn't do the conditional acceptance and stuff like that. I I just stick with what I believe is rational that I can prove. I use their public relations against them. I've never Actually, seen... what, what you do, though, is 
kind of like a conditional acceptance when you go in and say, I'll plead guilty to the, you know, and I'll pay according to the facts. That's a conditional acceptance upon proof of claim type thing. Well, the, uh, well we never get past the proof where I, the, my main point is going in and showing there is no proof of claim. There is no, right. there is no case. So there's right. never any, there's never any issue. All I do is keep it very simple. Uh, show me where there's uh, – bottom line, just like with the tax people, you show me a case, and I'll pay you right now, and they're not able to – it doesn't have to get any more involved with that. In fact, the, one of the biggest things I tell people, the most important thing is, you're, is that you don't need to talk. Stop saying so much. You, know, you, you don't need to be spewing forth all these things. It's very simple. Uh, just like someone years ago was very famous for saying, does anybody here have a, uh, have a case against me or a claim against me? You know, I mean, it that's really doesn't have Gordon to go Hall. beyond that. All right, that's Gordon Hall, right? Uh, gosh, it, it, I I forget. It's been a long time. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, well, when something yeah, like heard that one. It, when something like that 